Hello, everybody. Welcome in to another edition of Head Coach U. I am Brian Fisher, joined, as always, by former BYU and Virginia head coach Bronco Mendenhall. And Bronco, one of your old ACC rivals, has uh, thankfully uh, given us some time and, and jumped on. Mike Norvell of the Florida State Seminoles. Mike, thank you so much for, for jumping on with us. No, absolutely. Uh, glad to be on and uh, you're looking forward to it. Well, we, we were looking forward to chatting and, and, and it's wild to think for, for you yourself. I mean, you, you're barely over that that 40 year old, old mark and going into your eighth year and coaching fourth there at FSU. Is it kind of wild to think back that you, you've been doing this for, for quite a while now? Well, you know, I, I still feel young at spirit, but when I look at uh, when I look at all the gray hairs I've accumulated in a very quick time, uh, you know, it's uh, it's a uh, it's been a heck of a journey. Mm-hmm. So, man, I'm uh, so I'm 57. Holy smokes. When I think about 40, gosh, there's there's a lot of football, a lot of experiences ahead. And what a great start you're off to. So for our listeners, why don't you give us a quick man, just uh, maybe a head coach summary of, of what your learnings have been at the places that you've coached so far and just kind of the maybe the development of you into the role that you're in and the success you're having. Well, you know, I, I was I was so blessed to be able to to get the opportunity uh, to become a head coach at the University of Memphis to start off. Um, you know, I was 34 years old at the time. Uh, you know, I'd been an offensive coordinator um, for the previous four years at Arizona State, and that was, you know, when I took that jump. I mean, it was you. Know, for many years of my my coaching career, I didn't know exactly you know what I was desiring. If that was a, if I wanted to be a head coach, I love the 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 you know being able to be a coordinator, a position coach, but you know making the jump to be a head coach. I mean, it was it was special, and I, and I've really enjoyed this role more than what I probably even thought I would. Uh, you know, just the importance of every decision. You know, all the things that go with it. Um, you know, I, I was. Going into Memphis, it was a unique situation. Uh, you know, it was a program that had, you know, Coach, you know, Justin Fuente had come before me, and uh, you know, really had done some nice things uh, in, within the program. But you know, as he left out, you know, we had a first round draft pick quarterback that was leaving. A lot of change in the program, and you know, we had to kind of put our stamp on what that was going to be and what it would look like. And you know, I just got to get a chance to coach so many, you know, great players and great young men, and uh, you know. We're, fortunate enough to, to elevate the program and won three divisional championships and AC uh, an American conference championship. And, you know, got to lead them to a, to, uh, to the cotton bowl, uh, which was really special and you opened the door to be able to come to Florida state. And this is an, an incredible place. Uh, you know, just, you know, what a tradition, you know, what a, you know, what an opportunity that was, uh, uh, that was open for me to come and, uh, you know, to be able to put together a wonderful staff. Um, you know, we've, it's, it's been, you know, three years and, you know, Bronco, like, like, you know, we talked about, I mean, it, you know, coming in with, with the first year being COVID, I mean, it was unique and it was uh, something that presented, you know, more challenges than probably what you could ever, you know, you know, really expect, you know, anytime you come into a new program, you're trying to put you know, your stamp and, and just a belief and values and, and you, know, you build a foundation for what it is. But, um, you know, that was that that really gave a whole new perspective and trying to find new ways to be able to connect with players. And, um, you know, this being a head coach, I mean, it has been special. And, you know, for, for me, the coordination of all departments and the importance of, of every person and, and, you know, just, you know, the roles from whether it's an, an academic coordinator to, to athletic training, strength, condition, nutrition, mental health, uh, you know, all the different things that are that are a part of helping, you know, develop the student athletes. I mean, that's uh, it's been it, it's been a lot of fun seeing that come together. And then, you know, I, I, I love the, the role of just, you know, helping young coaches as well. And, you know, I've been fortunate. I've had a lot of great coaches that I've got to be on that journey with. I think I've had to hire, uh, you know, right at 40 uh, assistant coaches in, in a, I guess, a seven year period of time. And, you know, because of guys that have gotten, gotten opportunities to go and, and, uh, you know, elevate their careers, go into diff- different positions. I've got, you know, three, three uh, guys that are current head coaches that are now, uh, you know, in, at the, uh, at the FBS level. And, uh, you know, I'm just, you know, so proud of them. And it's, it's just as much as we get the enjoyment of watching a, you know, a player that goes and, and accomplish their, uh, their goals and dreams, you know, being able to see coaches do that, uh, you know, through, through our program. I mean, it is special. So I know it's a long winded uh, kind of response to that first, but that's, that's what I've, I've just truly loved about, you know, being a head coach and you're definitely fortunate for the opportunities that I've been provided. You mentioned two things that really resonated with me, uh, the importance of every decision as the head coach and the importance of every person. 
And I'm anxious to hear just maybe about the processes now that you know and have learned the importance of every decision and that you're really accountable for everything in your program. I don't know, maybe how, how have you grown or matured or what processes or what's helped you kind of really uh, understand the importance of each decision and then working as hard as you can to make it the right one? No, absolutely. Uh, and, you know, I'll give you a short story of, uh, of when that reality hit. Um, you know, you, I remember I got the head coaching job at Memphis and, um, you know, just like, you know, you get the job, you have a press conference set, you, you get the schedule to meet with the team, all those things. And uh, I remember going into, into my office and, you know, just getting those, those things aligned for what was about to happen. And, um, you go and have the press conference, you get in front of the mic, they say, go. And now it's every word, all the, 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 the vision, you know, the expectation, the standards of, of how you're going to operate um, met with the team was there. All those things went really smooth, but then I went back to the, to my desk and, you know, you're thinking about, all right, coaches, I need to hire recruits that we need to get on. And I had a, a wonderful administrative assistant that, that came in and uh, you know, we were, she was with me for the entire four year t- that period of time at, uh, at Memphis. But I remember when she came in, and she said, well, coach, you know, I just wanted to ask you, what time do you want me to come in to work tomorrow? Uh, because I had a, a previous agreement with uh, with Coach Wente that I could come in an hour early and leave 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 at a certain time for what her home home life schedule you know, was. And I remember looking up, I was, I don't care what time you come in, please show up, right? And uh, you know, but but then you sit back and you think about it. It's such a simple question, but whatever my response is was going to affect her life her family, the things that she is uh, accustomed to. And so, you know, that really kind of put it into scope that it's not just the big picture of who you're hiring as an offensive defensive coordinator. It's, it's the structure of the schedule. All things are going to impact people's lives. And, you know, I'm, I'm big on that. And it's something that, you know, I, I think is so important to you know, in my role is to provide people with structure. You know, uh, we talk about, you know, the values of our programs, you know, service, sacrifice, and respect. It's, it's truly what I want, you know, our, our football program to embody, you know, with players, coaches, everybody that we, that we are around. Uh, but, uh, but I truly believe that, you know, service is the number one responsibility of what I need to do and what I need to be for, for the program. And, you know, how I can serve is I can provide structure. And, you know, I think it's so important that whether it's on the field, whether it's, you know, off the field, meeting rooms, coaches, you know, development staff, I mean, that we can provide a structure of how we're going to operate and all the things that we can do to put our people, put our people in the best position to be able to achieve success, to be able to achieve their, the, the desired goal, uh, the aspirations that we all have. But if we can provide that structure, uh, you know, it will help push everybody, you know, it, stepping in a similar direction. And, you know, that doesn't mean that every structure structure that we set, you know, is successful. You know, there's some, you always have to adapt. You always have to go and look and reevaluate, you know, the, uh, you know, you know, what you're doing and, and how you're doing it. But, you know, I think that is something that has been critical for us. Um, you know, I'm a planner. I like, you know, I like making sure that the organizational approach, because, you know, I think that shows respect to others and it, it helps, you know, let everybody know, um, you know, kind of the, the direction we need to go and, and, you know, the steps that need to be able to be taken to, to get there. And, uh, and so that's, that's one of the things as a head coach, I think has been, um, you know, it is a, probably one of the greatest responsibilities I have, but it's also one of the things that, you know, you, it, it's quick to, you'll get asked a, a million questions and you sometimes you want to just give a quick response to it, but it needs to be calculated. You have to think of the, the ripple effects of, of all things. And, and it's one of the things that I try to help with, with our coaches, whether it's an assistant coach or a coordinator, you know, anybody that aspires for more, you know, to, to truly try to take themselves out of, you know, just the, the, the simple response to, to a, to a problem or to an issue or, or somebody, you know, that, that, that might come their way to think about that, beyond and and to try to really bring themselves to you know whatever the situation is how is this going to affect the bigger part of the program and uh, you know I was I was fortunate I came up uh, under under uh, Todd Graham um, you know he was head coach you know Arizona State you know Tulsa I mean, those are the time the years I spent nine years with them and, and I never forget you know I, I joined his staff as a as an offensive graduate assistant and, you know, I remember when I was a GA, you know, he made mention of, of something that, you know, trying to find 10 guys that could be position coaches, right, that would approach every day as if they were the head coach. 
And I remember, I'll never forget, it. it was one of the first days I ever worked for him. And I wrote that down on the pad, on the pad that I had as I was taking notes. And, and, you know, it was, a, it was a challenge to me. And, you know, even though I was a GA and heck half the guys on staff probably didn't even know my name, but it was an opportunity that if I could approach my job every day as if whatever decision, whatever responsibility, the things that were put in, in front of me, if I could have that with a head coach mentality, that that was going to be the make or break. That was, it, it was, it was going to really, you know, help all things. And, and I tried to do that throughout my coaching career. And I tried to pass that along. And, you know, even, even today, whatever, uh, there'll, there'll be, there'll, there'll be a problem or a challenge that will present itself today, but, you know, not to get so quick to just give a response to get to the next one, making sure that the, the responses that we give are, are going to have a, a, you know, an all inclusive, you know, thought of what the, what the ripple effect could be. There, there's so much in there that, man, that I'd like to, to go back and visit and going back to your story of, of your assistant and wanting to know what time and, and what her schedule might look like. And Ruffin McNeil taught me something in the one year he was with me at, at University of Virginia. And he used to say, you know, uh, everybody's somebody. And, and so behind every door, there is a person there that, um, that has their own life. And yeah, when they're with you, um, there is a, a work, um, a work context, but there's a lot of their life. They're not with you. And, and so those are those questions they ask usually are reflective of that other life, right. That, and the intimacy that, that happens there. And, and your, your response that early, uh, my guess is set a pivotal, um, precedent for understanding and listening to one of your people, right. That's going to work with you and, and, uh, um, be such a fierce partner it, through all the stuff that happens. And if, if that would have been uh, a less kind or, or less thoughtful approach, it's amazing from your seat, um, the impact of a single choice or how it's delivered and the ripple effects that that can have. And it's, it's really a unique challenge. And uh, I, I learned early on. So what I believe, right, is every choice is governed by a principle and every principle is governed by a belief. And so here's here's the structure that you have, just as you said, that you're well organized and coordinated and you provide this great platform for people to work within. But then the decision making, you it allows you some customization within that framework for each person without ever compromising the principles or the beliefs. But that kind of sets the boundaries and. Uh, we also know in the world of kind of work fulfillment that three things really drive uh, or, or uh, come into effect that really drive that autonomy is really important. So when people know the boundaries and have the flexibility to work autonomously as a head coach would, as an assistant, right? Wow, does that accelerate the growth of a program? Um, so mastery is another one where people, they want autonomy, but they also feel like you said you place three coaches or have helped three coaches go on to be head coaches already, which is which is so fun and develop young people. But mastery, that means they're getting better. They know they're getting better. There's metrics that see them so, and they can see themselves getting better. They're rewarded for getting better. And then they advance and there's a giant celebration when they do. Uh, and so the, the mastery part, but kind of overarching the autonomy and mastery is purpose. And so when people show up, if, if, they're, if they're clear with the purpose and they have some autonomy to go after that purpose and they can feel themselves getting better, um, wow, there's, there starts to be momentum. And just, just what you shared within the structure and the organization, but also the decisions you're making, because uh, if those decisions aren't aligned, and, and my guess is just as, as you said, uh, the number of decisions you're making every day, <laughs> that was the one thing that I remember uh, most is I, I never showed up with, with my calendar, uh, where a day went according to my calendar <laughs> there, there wasn't once. And so the number of decisions going back to what you were just saying, starting with, okay, you're, here's, you're the coach at Florida state. And by the way, it's a worldwide pandemic. Okay. The number of those decisions versus now where probably the expectations are growing and momentum is built and confidence is, is pouring off of your team and your staff and, and so it's a different stage. Um, so I'm interested as, as you think about um, going back to the question, which I loved or the comment of approaching each day as a head coach from an assistant coach's seat, 
how did you how did you best like what what was your thought process what facilitated maybe um did that mean you expanded your scope of what you were thinking about or how that how that might affect the entire program i'd love to hear more about that yeah absolutely and i think it's more one of those things that the it's the emphasis of res- of the responsibility that we take and you know people make the place and you you know this is one of my favorite thing things that i get to do is i i get to help impact people and whether it's a, an administrative assistant, um, you know, my one of my favorite groups within an entire football program is our equipment managers. You know, the student managers, the the the, the guys that don't, you know, they don't get to live and 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 ever see their name, you know, you know on television, or they don't ever get to to be, you know, you know, celebrated for. But it's one of the most hard, you know, hardest working people that we have within a program that makes so many things go, and it's it's trying to trying to be able to emphasize you know, the importance of role, the importance of responsibility. Um, you know, anybody can, can complain about the things that are, that, that don't happen or, or that, you know, maybe it's not as good as, as what you would desire, but you know, the, the importance of a role, the importance of a job, the importance of, of the responsibility or tasks that you're given, if you're willing to put it all into it as if that was the difference maker for the program, um, you know, I, I believe that, you know, the respect that is grown in that will will allow for the sacrifices that need to be made, too. Because, you know, we talk about those those values and everything. I try to take everything back to that. You know, when you serve others, I mean, you're willing to give of yourself for the betterment of 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 others and to be able to, to help provide, you know, an opportunity for, for that growth and to, to help dreams become a reality. And, you know, if we can just be the best of us, whatever it is, whatever job title, you know, whether you're, you've been in coaching for two years, whether you've been in it for 60 years, whatever that, wherever you are in that journey, you know, it can, the, the responsibility and the standard is always there. It's to be your best, to help benefit others, to be able to help, you know, you know, lift and, and, you know, guide others to what they can do. But it's not, it's not just showing up and going to a job. And I don't care what, what the title is, the importance is, nece- is necessary, whether it's a custodian, whether it's a, a it's a, a student assistant that's welcoming, welcoming somebody at the door, you know, whether it's the head coach and, and, you know, the way that, that you approach people and build those relationships, because, you know, the only way that you're going to be able to, to have have people willing to sacrifice, which, you know, I mean, in leading a program that the sacrifice is necessary because every day, you know, that you that you come into work or every day uh, that you go home to your family, uh, there's going to be something that is unexpected that shows up. And it's usually going to pull from one where one area or the other. And you can have the best structure in the world, but you have to be able to adapt to the to the challenges and the changes that show up. And so that sacrifice is key. But I, I truly believe that the only thing in the world we're sacrificing for is something that you love. And so being able to try to bring that component into the program through how you treat people by, you know, what you're what you're aspiring to do and, you know, trying to, you know, that that word is as important in our program as anything. And, you know, we're we're part of the most violent, you know, one of the most violent you know sports, you know, uh, that's out there. But when you can when you can tie love into it uh, and how and how people you know, treat each other and, and you know, you know, the, the way they embrace the game, the way they re- embrace the, you know, their responsibility, then, you know, they're going to be willing to sacrifice and, you know, they're going to be willing to give of themselves for you know something that's maybe not, might not be comfortable in the moment, or it might, you know, you know, I mean, I've got an eight-year-old daughter and, and I mean, I love, I mean, I love watching her grow and I love, you know, the, the, you know, the, the journey that I get to be on, you know, my wife, Maria and I, we've been married 18 years and it's, it's so much fun to be able to do what we do. Um, but there's plenty of nights I don't see my daughter before she goes to bed. And, you know, with that, you know, it's, she's a part of this program as much as anything. We'll have, you know, our family nights, we'll have, we'll have, you know, she'll come out to practices, any opportunity that she can. And when she knows and cares about the players, you know, it, when we have to sacrifice and have those times when I'm not around her or when, when, you know, I've got to be on the road when she knows who we're doing it for, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that she's going to miss me any less, but she knows that we're, we're helping make an impact for others. And I want that throughout the program, whether it's, like I said, whether it's a student manager, whether it's, you know, an assistant, an academic personnel, if, when you can have that, that mindset, it, I think it just makes, it makes it worth it. And then, you know, you never want, you know, as a, as a, when you're leading, you know, a program an organization, you know, it's, it's hard when people leave. It, it's hard when you have to do, but when you know that you've, you've helped somebody on a journey and that they've given all that they have to make, to, to make the place better, then you get to celebrate it with them. And, you know, I mentioned, you know, I, 
you know, hiring 40 assistant coaches in a seven year period of time, it, it there's been, that's been hard. Yeah. It's been challenging because like I said, people make the place, but when you have the examples of guys that have come in and, you know, some guys very early in their career, but they've seen that advancement. They've seen, you you see the impact, you see the opportunity, you see the potential that they, uh, that they've been able to, to, I guess, live up to in, in a lot of ways, you know, it, it's, you get to celebrate them on that, on, on, on their journey, rather than, you know, just keep everything in mind, you know, just focus on you. It, it's really, you get to, you get to be a part of that bigger. And then it opens doors for other guys to come in and, to, you know, to see them impact the players you get to coach and, um, you know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, get a little, little long with this, but it, it is, it's, it is, that's what I, that's what I love about it. And I, and I think that when you can get to those, to that, that type of mentality on a daily basis, you know, it's, it, it pushes everything forward. And that doesn't mean you're going to win every day. It doesn't mean it's going to always go according to plan. Cause it's really not, it's, you know, but when you have, when you have people that are there in the journey with you and they care and they're willing to sacrifice and, and you know, willing to, to support each other because they know that um, that they have that support, and they also have um, you know the the opportunity to go out there and, and make it theirs. You know, as as if they're as if they're a head coach. Um, you know, I think it, it it makes the journey worth it. Mm. There, there was a there was a time uh, when Chris Peterson and I sat down to visit, and he was coaching at Boise, and I was at BYU at the time, and I, I we. A, a, a Nike trip together or some uh, might've been like the ACC's version of Amelia Islands and coaching meetings or something, but we sat down and he shared something that they did at, uh, at the end of every fall camp. And, and they basically called it roll call. Um, not like by attendance, but basically meeting with every player at the end of fall camp as to what their role was on the team at that time, mm-hmm. you know, what they might need to do for that role to change. But then what came with that role? And in almost every role, yours included, mine included, right? There's a sacrifice that comes with that. Uh, but he thought it was so important to have clarity of expectations around what their role was, right? Calling it what it was, defining it what it is, showing all the details of importance of how that's going to fit into the, the entirety of the organization and how if they do that role really well, that that's going to facilitate not only their own growth, but the program's growth. And then, right, the chance of, How might that role expand? And time consuming, he certainly said, right? And that's when you're finishing fall camp and getting ready for your opener. So there's a there's a choice there. But the clarity of someone's role and knowing how they fit and then, quite frankly, to your point, the sacrifices that's going to take and it might not have been their ideal role. Right. And they might have been disappointed. However, um, there was a path leading forward as to how that role might change, but also really clear, a really clear uh, idea of the importance, right, and the impact of their role. And and I, that always stuck with me, um, kind of under the catchphrase roll call, uh, but also sacrifice, as you mentioned, with Maria and your, your eight-year-old daughter, uh, right, when, when they uh, can make it personal, see the people you're working with and know them by name, there starts to be uh, it makes the sacrifice they're making and time away from you and vice versa, that gap closes a little bit because, because it's becoming personal. Yeah. And, and that to me, it sounds like is a huge emphasis uh, within your program of, of personal relationships, maybe to, to offset some of the friction point of sacrifice is kind of what I heard you say. No, absolutely. And uh, you know, it's, you, you think back and, and one of the, one of the coolest things that has happened for me as a, as a head coach, you know, my daughter's playing, she's playing, uh, um, you know, I guess youth league basketball mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, she, she, her team got to the championship game. It's just a bunch of, bunch of you know, girls that they're, they're out there competing, having fun. And, uh, you know, for that championship game, uh, I'd never asked, I never ask a player to do, you know, anything outside, you know, beyond. And, uh, but it was funny because one of our running backs actually, you know, came to a couple of the games of, of my daughters and, uh, you know, and he got, he got a group of about 10 of our players that showed up for that championship game. And, you know, and I'm, I, it made me emotional, you know, because yeah. you see, you see players willing to sacrifice their time and, you know, when it comes to student athletes, you know, there's so many things pulling at them, but you know, they were willing to sacrifice for that night, that time to come support a group of eight, eight to 10 year old girls out there playing basketball. It's just, you know, you 
you see that. But when that can be a part of the greater organization where it's players, coaches, you know, all of us that are involved and, and you they're willing to do that, you know, not not required, but willing to. It just it makes it it makes it so much more enjoyable. And, you know, I, I know we, we talked about that a little bit. Just yeah, that's what that's what makes this jo- this job so much fun. And it, it is, it's one of the hardest professions in, in today's age with all the things going. But, you know, when you get to see, when you get to see the heart starting to come out, uh, whether it's a staff member, whether it's a player, you know, the, obviously the, the, the role that, that we have as, as, as head coaches and the impact that can make, it's just, and it's, uh, it's pretty special. Stephen Covey, uh, a great author, he, uh, he, he's written a lot of books, um, but there's a, a uh, an instrument that I've used for a long time, and he calls it the choice scale. And when you use the word willing, um, it, it triggered a thought. And with this choice scale, it means with every choice for any of us on screen or any of our listeners, the very bottom tier of that choice scale is rebel or quit, meaning, yeah, I've had enough. I'm not doing this anymore. So I quit. Even worse is rebel because you're kind of taking others with you, right? And sometimes when you inherit a program, there's there, you, there's some of that. Right above that is what's called malicious obedience, where they're going to do it, but they're going to grumble the entire time while they're doing it. And neither one of those is productive. Right above that, and this wasn't the context which you used, but it's called willing compliance, where folks will do it. Uh, they're not super excited, but they're not grumbling. It's just kind of pedestrian. You know, they'll, they'll just do it. So anyway, those bottom three tiers, really nothing positive happens and, and people's lives and organizations don't move forward. Right above that, there's something called cheerful cooperation. And all of a sudden, smiles, the way you can tell is people just start smiling and they're looking to help others. And wow, does it start to become fun? And you're describing some of that, right? There's cheerful cooperation and the student managers. <laughs> wow, those guys and, and, and girls, are they amazing to be around, right? If you have student managers that are cheerful and cooperating, what a just a bright spot. Above that is heartfelt commitment, where it, it, it just, uh, as you just mentioned, people's hearts start to show. And that's what happens in that tier. And above that is this thing called creative excitement, where they just, the text threads and stuff are going nonstop about how to make your program better. What if we did this? What if we did that? Hey, this will be fun. Let's do it. It just doesn't, it, there's just, and, and what happens to, at your seat is solutions start coming in not just ideas, but really well thought out, heartfelt solutions about um, creatively and excitedly making progress. And so when a player gets 10 of his friends and teammates uh, to come to support someone else within the program, um, that's, a, that's a tier of, of uh, existence that number one is contagious, but number two is is really at the epicenter, I think of what um, our existence is and within college sport when so much else is emphasized, what that was was service, right? That was kindness, that was compassion, that was caring. And and especially for college athletes who are viewed as, yeah, um, pretty important for a 10 year old or eight year old girl um, and her teammates to, to see someone like that come to the game what what better gift you couldn't go to any store and purchase something and give a better gift than that um, no and and, and that and, and that's where you know you sit there and you know it's 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 the scope the scope of impact and you know yes. you you sit there and you know i think so many people go into this go into this profession and really now because college football has become such a big business and there's and there's jobs there's titles there's response you know, all the responsibilities and, and everybody wants more but you, you know, so many people can get get so focused on just this small this small scope of of, of job title and and you know the 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 ladder of, of promotion and on all the things that are there but you miss out on on the opportunity to impact and it's just there's so many you know, you know, we get to we get to change lives. We get to 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 help provide platforms. And you know, when you see when you see people taking advantage of that, and the willingness to step out, the you know, the willingness to um, to do more. The, the you know, it's there, there's uh, you know, I think in this in this job, especially you know, as as a head coach, you know, you know there's a there's a lot of fear that kind of probably uh, surrounds you know people that that work for you or that are around it. You know, 
to, to have to put up a suggestion because, you know, they might work. They might not. They might be received. They, you know, all of those things, you know, you got to be calculated in that. But it's like when you can when you can have that openness and people can, you know, you have a job, your responsibility is to be the best that you can possibly be at the job that you have. But then you know, also being willing to put yourself out there and to provide some solutions to be able to provide, you know, a different perspective. And, you know, I, I tell coaches, I tell players, you know, I mean, if there's if there's something that's out there that, that we believe that can make us better, you know, we got to you know, we've got to be almost bold enough. Right. And to you know, almost to submit to the to the, uh, you know, to the fear that you have, like you, you got to get past that. You can't let that guide you. You got to just hey, I, I understand that, you know, that it's, it's there, but I'm going to be able to step out to, to, to go beyond just what, you know, the, the box or the role or the title that I have to try to, to push it forward because you care. And I, I think that's where it, it, it all goes back, you know, to that. And I, I, it's, it's, when you have that type of, of atmosphere, it's, um, you know, I just think it's, it's special to be a part of, and that's, that's what we're pushing for, uh, you know, on a daily basis, but it's a lot of, a lot of the great experiences that I've got to have, uh, coming up and, you know, just trying to pass that along, you know, as with the, with the job responsibility I have. When you talked about, um, atmosphere there, there really is a lot that goes into that. And, a word that a lot of people use, but it hasn't really defined it well, is the culture. And and so you mentioned right before atmosphere, caring. And and so there becomes when when authentic leaders do a really nice job of caring and it's sincere, um, the organization knows that. And so then I think what happens is those within the organizations look hard at the context. And, and if they truly know the leader cares about them, then they know it's safe within context when and where to provide solutions and ideas. And, and so there would be certainly on the practice field, my demeanor and maybe even my approachability in that moment to, uh, to a solution or a recommendation uh, might not, I might not have been as open, but, but quite frankly, in, in the world of expect uh, of, uh, developing people, expectations and caring, right? Those two things come together to form a magical um, combination and a compounding effect. But right after, uh, there used to be these these bleachers or uh, bench seats right before we went into our locker room. And it was kind of just what I called office hours. And I would sit there, practice is over and players are taking off their cleats and and players and coaches would come sit down there and that then in that context, the caring hadn't changed, but the context had changed. And now it was totally great um, to have a safe place to just, yeah, man, this could have been better. Hey, coach, what if we tried this? You know, hey, I was thinking about this. And it's amazing once once there's a boundary, maybe I could put it this way. Once the players and your organization knows where the boundaries are of when to approach and and Okay, that's not the best time, but every day at this time or or uh, as long as it's not this, yeah, come talk to me and it is safe. All of a sudden, those ideas from really smart, invested, grateful and committed people, it starts making the program better, I think. No, and that's and that's exactly right. And and that's we're providing opportunities yes. and just like whether it's on a bench outside of a locker room or, or if it's, you know, uh, you try to try to be specific in times to set apart to hear and listen and to, you know, anybody can can say, oh, well, bring your ideas to me. Well, yeah. it's sometimes hard to walk through the door, but it's a little bit different to, to you know, walk down, the, down, a, down a sidewalk together and to be able to have, you know, but there's also, it's respecting the process. And like you, you mentioned, you know, being on the field and, you know, there's, you know, we're, we're trying to maximize the time of each day. Oh. And, you know, I tell, I tell players, look, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do everything in my power to respect the time and the obligations that you have. Right. And we've got to respect that for the team as well. And so, you know, there are times that it, it's pr probably pretty unapproachable, you know, you know, in the course of a practice, because we're trying to maximize the, 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 the time that we have, we're trying to respect that. So there, there's not going to be times where there's, you know, we've got to be able to build the trust that, mm -hmm. That we're we're doing all that we can for you to be the best that you can, and then we're always going to reflect back to you know how well was that executed, um, and and I think you know as a leader you know you 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 build that through the willingness to be vulnerable too. You know I've made I've made plenty of mistakes throughout uh, throughout uh, you know my time as a head coach, and you know it's, it's sometimes I think 
you know, you'll see a lot of coaches that, you know, even when a mistake is made that they, it's, it's so hard for them to stand in front of, just admit it. Like, you know, yeah. it's, 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 and, and ultimately that's one of the, one of the things that, you know, when things don't go, you know, how you, how you thought they would uh, own that and get better. And that's where I, you know, I, I try to be, I try to be very vulnerable uh, to, to our team, to our staff. Um, you know, I'm very confident in the things that, that we're doing. I'm very confident. in when we have a plan and it's time to go implement that plan, I'm, I'm confident in that plan because we put a lot of work into to preparing that we put a lot of work into the structure of, of what we're trying to do. Uh, but that doesn't, that with, with all the work that goes into it, doesn't mean it's always going to be successful. And it doesn't mean that, you know, it's, it's the mistakes are sometimes necessary. <laughs> and I, I tell, I tell our, our players, you know, um, you know, there's so many kids, I mentioned the fear of failure, you know, that's, that's something that is real. And there's so many players out there that are just, they're so afraid to put everything that they have into the opportunity because they don't want to fail or they don't want to be judged or they don't want to to you know, have any of that with, with social media and all the all the judgment that can be there that they they hold back uh, but well you know, i tell them sometimes all that i need is for you to give everything that you have and i need you to experience momentary failure because when you experience that you might get knocked down but you're always going to learn a lesson which provides an opportunity to get better to that provides an opportunity to learn how to get up and to keep pushing forward. You know, I mean, our, our, uh, you know, our second year here, you know, we went through COVID in year one, you know, it was, a uh, you know, it was a, a, a crazy challenging year to try to establish a foundation, but we come into year two and, um, you know, we open the season, we play Notre Dame. It's a, it's a, I think a Sunday night game, you know, Go into overtime. They're a top-ranked team. We go into overtime. You know, we end up losing by a field goal. It was a great game. You know, a lot of excitement around the program. The next week, we come back and we lose to an FCS team. First time ever in program history. And we start the season 0-4. And, and, Coach, it was the first time in my life. I've been a part of football for 35 years. First time in my life I'd ever been a part of an 0-4 team. I'd only been a part of one losing season before I came to Florida State. And so, if I remember – you know, in that moment, I came in on that Sunday and, you know, like I said, not something I have a, a history to be able to reflect back to, but I told our staff, I was like, you know, now we get a chance to go be the example for a group of 18 to 22 year olds of how you respond when something doesn't go the way that you thought. You know, my expectation coming to Florida State was to win every game, but it didn't go that way. And and we were we found ourselves in a moment where it was challenging. It was it was hard. There was a, there was a lot of things on the outside, but we needed to be able to 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 show consistency and continuity and belief in what we were doing. And we just had to get better at it. And we'd been knocked down, but you know, in, in standing in front of a team and said, you know, they, there were things that we had to get corrected and we had to continue to do better. But it wasn't you know, it wasn't so much of this. It was like, hey, this is us and this is me and, and I've got to improve. I've got to be better. But it's the belief in where you're going. And, uh, you know, and ultimately we were able in that moment, you know, we were three and 10, I think, in our first 13 games. And we've been 15 and six since. And it wasn't we didn't change. You know, there wasn't a drastic change. There was just the ownership of, of action, the ownership of improvement. And, you know, I, I tell guys, you know, we had to go through what we needed to prove we could get there. And as a, as a coach, I'd never been through it before, but you know, it has helped us on the, on the journey because we were even through that, our coaches, our players, you know, we were all, we were all pushing, we were all giving, we were all, you know, you know believing but the results weren't necessarily what we what we desired, but it might have just been what was necessary to help get us to where I believe we're going to be able to, to, to go. And it's just like that, you know, that's the same thing. You know, I think so many coaches, it, it can be on the field with the football team, but it also I, I, I do believe it's the same thing with coaches, you know, as they look at this profession. You know, so many coaches try to try to examine the stories of others to define you know, what their story needs to be. And, and ultimately, every every journey is going to be unique to itself. And, you know, there's going to be times that you're going to step up. Sometimes you get might get knocked back. But, you know, if you continue to 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 believe in in how and what you do. Right. And, and positively impact others. You know, it, it's going to work out the way that it's supposed to. And so, um, you know, that's, you know, just kind of following up on that. I, I just really I really think all of those things are necessary, you know, just in our profession. But also when you, when you get to be a part of a team. I, I re so much, so much in that. And you talked about vulnerability early on in, in that response. And 
in my opinion, vulnerability um, lends itself to credibility. And it, it just makes everyone in the organization know that you're fallible. Um, you're trying as hard as you can. Uh, you'll own your mistakes and really are grateful for the successes and acknowledge and praise other people uh, for their role in the successes. And I think when, when, you're, when young people especially, but anyone sees someone trying as hard as they can, and if they know that, right, they're seeing you try as hard as you can. And when you fail, that um, you own that. And there, the credibility and trust is enhanced, I think, exponentially with every one of those moments where that happens. And, and that then lends itself to an organization falling forward, right? Those challenges and those failures, that actually propels uh, organizations and people forward. And, and setbacks, if handled the right way with the right leaders and the right examples, there's momentum built through um, setbacks. And that, to me, reframes everything. And then all of a sudden, managing the external expectations and environment, what if within the organization, what matters most is how hard someone tries? Yeah. Rather than the outcome, right? What if it's effort-based? What if this just someone trying as hard as they can try, doing the very best they can, and the reward structure and the praise from the leader coming for that, that doesn't mean at the expense of outcome. Right. That's still we still acknowledge that. But as soon as that shifts where outcome is everything, then the external pressures start to then make risk and and putting yourself and becoming vulnerable. Who wants to do that? Yeah. And, and so really, as you're describing it, man, the seat that you have is so important to. Um, to, to battle against those external pressures and outcomes as you felt as the head coach. And certainly now probably at the highest level ever the players feel with uh, their visibility. No, there's no, no doubt about it. And, you know, I, I, you know, as we talk about it as a football team, you know, it's, you know, our expectation, you know, the, the standard is, is best. And it's, it's like, that's, you know, I can't ask for anything more. And does that mean that, does that mean that, that, that we're going to win every single game? I mean, I sure hope so. If, if you know, I've got a lot of confidence in what in, in, in the team that I get to coach and the players and the coaches I get to be around. But, you know, ultimately, if if we get that, if we get, you know, every, each player, each coach, at the end of the day, we know we've given our best. We've 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 tried to apply the lessons that we've learned to to grow and to get better, you know, uh, to that standard. And you, I'll be able to live with the results. I'll be able to live with the outcomes. And even if there are the you know, the, the momentary failures, you know, it, it does, it does have a chance to build confidence because of the work that you're willing to put in. And I, I tell our teams that I tell our coaches that, that, I mean, most people you talk to, especially, you know, 18 to 22 year old young men or, or, or coaches in a profession, if you ask them, are you confident? Most of them are going to say the same thing. Most of them will say yes, but you know, I mean, confidence is built through work and experience. And that's where, you know, when you are, are willing to put in, when you're willing to, to pour in, and like, you know, for us, you know, this year coming into the season, you know, there's, I, I've been asked so much, well, coach, well, now that there's expectations for your team, <laughs> there's, there's always been expectations, right? And there's no outside expectations that's going to be more than the expectation that we have, because our expectation is just to go be our best. And if we can live that, if we can actually live it, and not get caught up with the outside. It, you know, a year ago, there was not much expectation on the outside for Florida State, right? But that didn't dictate what we what we were willing to accomplish and what we were willing to do because of what we were willing to give. And, you know, I think back to some of those experiences of starting 0-4. Nobody in the world would ever want to be there. But if you take advantage of it, Right. When you find yourself in that moment, well, then you can truly be confident in what you're doing and where you're going because you've seen the results of that work. You've seen the results of that response. And it's the same thing, you know, as a you know, as a professional and working a job and, and, and being able to to go into that, like the, the willingness to sit back and, you know, every position coach to court or I mean, starting as a G.A., Right. I remember like, you know, the willingness to, 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 to go through that process. I mean, I was a GA for three years and, and, you know, each year that I was a GA, I was offered an opportunity, you know, that I could have taken a, 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 a quicker path or a quicker step. And I, I thank God for my wife and her belief in, 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 uh, in what we were doing and where we were going, because, you know, 
I mean, the willingness to say no was something that was big in, in my path. And to, to continue on, you know, maybe a little bit, you know, uh, you know, you know, different, different journey than than what others might have taken. Um, and I still find that the same today. You know, as you put together a football team and recruiting and all the things that are out there, uh, you know, everybody wants big, strong, fast, powerful. But if they don't fit your program, are you willing to say no to that? You know, I mean, uh, in, in a world of, you know, everything's competition, your recruiting classes, this, that, the other. Well, th sometimes there might be highly rated players that don't fit what you what you need in your team. And if you're willing to say no because of that belief, it might be the action that helps propel you, you know, forward just because you, of the expectation of un understanding, you know, what you're trying to build and what you're trying to do. And so um, – no, I absolutely agree agree with that, and it's um, you know it, it's it, the challenge is living it out, <laughs> and uh, yeah, which which is the both the the joy and the struggle, right, of living out your beliefs and your principles, and going back to saying no. What what a, a powerful lesson that is, especially from a seat of a leader, um, because it's I think everyone would like to be uh, liked and praised and acknowledged, and saying yes usually leads more to that. However, no uh, is usually more grounded in principle. It's usually more intentional and thought out when you, and there's usually a reason that moves your program or a person forward. And, and no is much harder to say, but wow, is it intentional? And, and maybe you've experienced this, but uh, uh, the advice I used to give our, our coaching staff, it's in the game plan process, it's much easier to add and add all the way till the last second before you play than it is to eliminate and with really tight constraints, either on the size of a call sheet or the hours in a day, right? Work expands to the boundaries you set. And so I always tried to keep the boundaries really tight because the hardest things to do were to throw things out. And that makes you prioritize things. It makes you think farther ahead. And then do we have enough? And wait, does this complement? Okay, we don't have time for all this, but what, what can we take? And within an organization, similarly, while you can't do everything, you can't chase down every great idea, but you can prioritize and you can focus. But wow, is that harder to wrestle with things that really matter? And so back to kind of this applying and saying no, uh, I'd like to uh, just as we close out here with with the players now that have so many different things pulling at them. Uh, so they're navigating a new landscape with NIL. They're navigating uh, um, a new landscape with more freedom in terms of where they can play, uh, much like assistant coaches have been, you know, where you could advance and move. And sometimes well, you and I both have moved, right? And some of those ascents are pretty fast. And assistant coaches that have been with you have moved to another place and become a head coach. And But you just mentioned along the way with that, you were saying no. And so I'm wondering how you approach that with our players now, with this next group of young people. So here's, here's a monetary opportunity, maybe. Here's a transfer opportunity. Maybe maybe it's just not looking at their phone or caring what the pretend world thinks of how they're playing. Uh, you know, uh, the I think the application of saying no is what I'd like just to kind of finish with and how you're how you're trying to navigate that with not not just you and your staff, but maybe the, the younger generation and our players. No, I mean, I think it's uh, it's a great question. And I think that, you know, as you go as you go through it, you know, there's there are so many different factors. And I, and I talk a lot about fit. I talk a lot about, you know, what is what is the experience that you're going to to be a part of? What is the experience of of the role that you have? I mean, you know, just like going back to Coach Peter, like this is a, the role. And we try to be very transparent with our players of this is where you are. This is what we believe you can do to get better. And, you know, ultimately you know, it's not always what you want to hear, but it's going to be real. And, you know, and on the flip side, I also tell them, look, I've made mistakes before too. I, just because I might have a, 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 a perspective of what, where I think somebody is, you know, that they have proven me wrong before. And so, but we try to be real and just in that evaluation part of it. Um, and it's, you know, whether it's a, a player that has an opportunity and, and, you know, in today's age, I've had, I've had players bring that conversation to me. Uh, I've got this school or, or this opportunity that's out there that, you know, there's monetary connections to it. And, you know, and my response is, well, what exactly do you want? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, because when you decide to say yes, well, then you have to go live it. 
And it's the same exact thing that I tell an assistant coach because, you know, there's no, there's, there's plenty of things in the short term that can make you happy uh, getting on the field, being, you know, uh, to, to make, to make more money. Everybody wants more. That is human, you know, human nature and nature and desire is to want more, but you know, ultimately, what is it that that you are going to get out of the experience? And is that truly is that truly what you want? Is it where you want to be? Is it how you want to be treated? Is who is it is it with people that you want to do it with? You know, what are the what are the rewards that, that you're willing to 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 value and and prioritize in ultimately where you're trying to go? Because you know, there's I've seen players and I've seen coaches that have made decisions for one reason to take a job, to, to transfer, to go to a position, um, to do whatever action it was. And ultimately they lost happiness. They lost joy. They lost, they lost so much that didn't allow them to be their best. And that's all I want. And there's, there's times that I've sat down and I've had very real and transparent uh, conversations with players and, you know, they bring that they want this opportunity. And, I, and I'll tell them like, well, if I don't see that here, and it might be best for you to go and take that opportunity because it, if it fits all the other things you want, then that could be. And, you know, it's, you know, we've had some players that have left and we've had some great players that have come in, but, you know, even the ones that come in, you know, I, I try to, you know, to, to a point almost scare them off to the expectation and responsibility of what it is to be a part of this program. You know, same thing with coaches. You know, I've had to hire a lot of them. And this is one of the toughest places in the country to coach because of, the expectation of the relationship of, of the, of the accountability with our players, if of what they have to pour into, right. And not just to who they are on the field, but who they are, they're growing to be off the field. Well, this program's not for everybody. And, and, you know, some guys really, you know, they, they, they draw to this and, and they're pulled to it. And then some, you know, some people, you know, they don't, maybe they're not, they're not into all of that. And so, you know, ultimately as you're going, as, as, as a player comes in, you know, that's, that's the things that I try to, to, to bring to their attention. And then, you know, what are the, who are they trying to please? Mm -hmm. Because there's so much with the, with the third parties and, and, you know, really a lot of the pressure that these kids get, you know, sometimes from families, sometimes from social media, sometimes from whatever it is, like, you know, where are you looking for your affirmation? Is it from within or is it from outside? Is, is, a dollar gonna gonna be what affirms you to tell you that you're the player that that you are. Is it is it you know the position you play? Is it the number of snaps that you get? I mean, you know, and and ultimately, like, I think I think a lot of young men. And it's no different than coach when you and I were eighteen or twenty two. You know, you're you, we all want to be affirmed, and and I think that you know being able to have a, a balance of of what of what is that gonna truly make make me happy and allow me to, to pour all that I have and be my best. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's harder now than it's ever been because of the, the different people that connect with players and, and the, the access that they have to them. And so, you know, just, we try to be, try to help players stay grounded to where they are, but also don't change things that ultimately might not be that important, you know, in the grand scheme of, of where they're trying to go. And, you know, we've had, we've had a lot of players that have had, that have said no to other opportunities. And, um, you know, we've had some that have said yes. And, you know, when the ones that do, I mean, I, I support them because, you know, ultimately what, you know, I'm not, I'm not always the person that can that say, well, I'm, I'm certain that this is not what's right for you, but it's on the flip side of it. You know, I'm going to be true to who I am. I'm going to try to be as, as transparent and, and uh, you know, open with them on, on my, my thoughts or my opinion. And, you know, it's, it's the same thing when guys are trying to make a decision, whether they're going to come back for another year, or go to the NFL. Like, I, I mean, get all the information, see all the things. And then, you know, what is it that, that you want? And you know, what is it that's going to that's going to, to to allow you to be your best, whether it's now, whether it's, you know, 20 years from now, we it's all all the decisions are going to help point to, to where you're going on your path. And so I um, hope that didn't get too scattered, but that oh, is that's that's, that's my approach to it, though. And I really uh, I'm, I'm, it's the hardest thing making a decision. And, you know, when there are choices and options and so many different things that are that are pulling uh, you know, at, at players and coaches, you know, just trying to get back to that, to that core principle of yeah. what are the things that, that you prioritize that are, that are, that, that might not just be what makes you happy in the moment hmm. that are going to allow you to, to be who you ultimately can, can become with all the potential that you have. 
it, it's really powerful. And, and let's face it, right? Decision making is a life skill. It's going to happen from these ages that these kids are now to our ages, 40 and 57, and they're going to keep going. And, and what I, what I really like just in listening to you is there, there's a process about that. And, and dialogue is, it starts with dialogue, right? An open, sincere and truthful and transparent dialogue. And when my wife, Holly is just so great where our, I have three boys and, and they call or talk to her and us about anything. There's no topic that they're not comfortable talking about openly and honestly. And wow, does that, does that just give you a great chance to, to help people make great decisions? And so the dialogue, I think, is kind of the foundational part. And then there's the contemplation after the dialogue, you know, and, and it's not a race. And sometimes there's time frames, but most of the time you can expand those. So that contemplation after the dialogue and then a lot of times there's another dialogue, <laughs> right? And another little contemplation. And then usually there's the, the action component. And, and so, man, if you have a chance with any of your players to go through that process and that's real and sincere, the, the chance that there's remorse or, or uh, lack of peace, if that, if that process really happens, that then is just the education of a person, right? They make a choice. You've helped them decide what they, they've been clear, what they want, yep. who they're trying to please. And the next part that um, I, I think is tied to it, and, and you've probably seen this, but in, in a world that appears to be more connected than ever, there's basically, according to health experts, a, um, almost a pandemic of loneliness. And, and what is perceived to make people happy is not coming through the phone and is not coming through the digital and is not coming through, it's coming through the one-on-one -on -one connections. And, and there's a pandemic of loneliness, uh, I, I, an epidemic of loneliness when we should be the most connected. And so these decisions, man, I'd be looking at where can I be the most connected yeah. and appreciated and, and valued and where can I, I truly become, um, uh, part of something and with people that I really want to be with. And so many, I think, are looking outside for that at places where it's not coming. And and so, man, the advice that you're giving your players, I think, is really helpful as a counterbalance to that. Well, it, it still goes back to what are you going to what are you going to be willing to invest what are you going to be willing to give? Like, and, you know, I, I truly believe that when you love something, you love the people you get to be around, when you love the, the opera, even the opportunity that you have, like you're going to, you're going to be willing to work and put all that you have into it. Right. And, and I'll tell our players like you, there's like, it's whether it's in recruiting, whether it's guys that are here, our hard work does not guarantee success, That's right. but it does allow you to put yourself in the best position. And when you're willing to give and invest and pour all of it into it, because you believe in, in the place, you believe in the people, well, then you're going to get the best of, of whatever that might be. And it doesn't, doesn't mean it's all going to go exactly how you want it to, but it will be the best of you. And, and through that, you'll, you'll gain, just like we talked about earlier, you'll gain the confidence. Like I, I do, I think back to my coaching journey and, you know, there were, there were opportunities there was opportunities to be a head coach earlier than what I became. And I was for, beyond fortunate, right. To, to get the opportunity when I did, but boy, I'm really, I'm really glad that I got the experiences and you know, what's ironic, you know, uh, I went to Arizona state where offensive, I was offensive coordinator there. We had some great teams. We had great players. I got to coach and, you know, we were, I think won eight games, 11 games, 10 games. And our, my last year there, we went six and six. And you know, it's funny The lessons I learned in that six and six season, right. Was, were things that have helped guide my coaching, you know, just thought opportunities, how I've responded to situations. And that was the year that I, that I got a, the, the head coach, the right head coaching opportunity for me, not after the 10 or the 11, which, you know, their doors were open and doors, the opportunities were there to, to make a move or make it to do that. But it was through even one of those challenging years where maybe from the outside it didn't look like it was necessarily beneficial, but it but it 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 has helped me so many times. And you know, I was working really hard, but the results maybe weren't always what we what we hope hope for. But essentially, it it it, it opened a door and an opportunity that helped change my life. And uh, you know, it's just 
you know, those are the things that uh, you, you try to you paint the picture for, for, for those you get to be around that you care about. And uh, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely uh, a, a very rewarding, um, you know, journey to be on. And, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm grateful for what I, I get to do. Well, it, it's so, it's so clear. Outside lenses are, are mostly inaccurate um, and, and biased in some way or the other. And the inside perspective is what you're providing uh, to counterbalance the outside um, to help people, which is great. And you're doing it through football. And we just really appreciate your time today and the insights and the chance just to visit and catch up and, and to hear your story and your journey and the things that have, that have helped you. And uh, Brian, I'll turn it back over to you to close us out. Well, I, it was definitely a fantastic conversation, Mike. We, we definitely appreciate the time. Hey, I, I, I know you got back from, from ACC meetings not too long ago. Did you, you guys miss Bronco hanging around those places? Or, or, or is, are the meetings no. just so much better now that he's, he's not around? They're, they're, they're so much better now that I'm not there. So well, much. I, I tell you what, you know, all, all the respect in the world for you, Coach. And, uh, you know, just – um, you know, your perspective. And I, and I will say this, you know, in, in the, in the time we got to, to be a part of those, those meetings, I mean, you know, coach Mendenhall is, is somebody that, that respects the game, respects people, you know, you know, truly, you know, even in times where he would pull himself back to, to, to state things for the greater good. I mean, that's, that's where you build respect and, and, and who somebody is more than just the, the job or the place that they're at. And so, uh, you know, I'm honored that you guys allowed me the opportunity to come and, and share a little bit just from uh, my past and experiences. And uh, you're definitely uh, grateful for the platform and, and the, the education that you're providing for, uh, for, for other coaches. And, um, you know, it's, a, it's definitely a, a special fraternity. So uh, thank you guys for, for allowing me to be a part of it. Absolutely. Well, it, it was great stuff and, and we'll, we'll have to have you back on. Uh, you know, I know it's exciting times uh, there in Tallahassee with, with what you guys got coming in, in going into the season. But uh, for, for Bronco Mendenhall, for Mike Norvell, I am Brian Fisher. Thank you all for tuning in for this very special episode of Head Coach U. We'll catch you again next week. <laughs>